Brothers and sisters, this is Dean Castronovo from the Dead Daisies, and you're listening to 89FM Radio Rock. Crank it, people! Oi, eu sou a Mariana Paulino e eu conversei com Dean Castronovo, baterista do The Dead Daisies. Ele me contou sobre os novos projetos da banda e você assiste agora essa entrevista exclusiva para 89, a Rádio Rock. I'm starting to Yes, ma'am, we can do this. So, Dean, um, I'm talking from Brazil, São Paulo, and I know from you, uh, have you ever been to Brazil? What do you yes, mean? actually, um, I played there back in 1995 with Ozzy Osbourne, uh, it was Monsters of Rock, uh, great show. Awesome show, actually. Um, so I've been there a few times, and um, I, I don't know if I played there with Journey or not. I don't know if we did, but uh, I know I was definitely there with Ozzy. Great. What do you remember from our country? I remember at the, at the Monsters of Rock show, there were a lot of guys in the audience. I do remember that. <laughs> um, but I just, I just remember the, it, just the beauty of it. It's just, you know, your country's gorgeous, hon. And, and um, I, I love the people. They're, they're very loyal fans. Um, and they've, you know, they've followed my career. A lot of the drummers there have followed my career. And, and uh, just great people, man. All around good people. Beautiful country. I love the food. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great there. I love it there. That's great to hear. So, Bean, um, about the song. I'm starting with the song, the first song that you released from this project. The mm -hmm. song's called Bustle and Flow. How did you decide on it to be the first single of this project? Well, that was David Edwards, the band's manager. He kind of picks and chooses what, what's going to go out first and, and um, what songs will be on the record. <laughs> so it was his, his idea. We didn't want to release um, uh, anything that was like um, too to middle of the road we wanted something that was going to be powerful and and kind of showed the fans what we're all about with glenn and the band now and and it's just such a cool song i <laughs> just i love the tune so i think it was all of us we all agreed that yeah that would be a great first single to come out with and and kind of you know kick you in the teeth so to speak you know what i mean just kind of wake everybody up to well this is a new band with glenn and and it's pretty ferocious i see um the last, the new single that you just released on December 4th, has also a video. What's the idea behind this music video? Well, you know, that, there again, that's another uh, David Edwards um, uh, vision. He has visions for, for everything. He's kind of like, he lives and breathes the dead daisies. So, I mean, this is his project, and, and, um, and uh, he just, he had an idea with it, and, and uh, we just kind of, we did it on, behind a green screen, you know, in front of a green screen, and, and did all that, and they put all the, um, uh, the stuff, the content in the back. Um, but I, I just think it's just a cool video. Just everything that David comes up with is really brilliant. I mean, he's got really good ideas. And um, so we just kind of let him roll with it, <laughs> you know, and, and he comes up with the stuff, and, and I'm really happy with it. The video came out great. It's really a cool video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, I liked the video too. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. About the, the album Holy Ground that's about to come out on January, what can you tell me about the process of creating and recording it? Wow. Well, we were in France, the south of, the south of France, close to Marseille, and uh, it was a chateau. Uh, we, you know, had, uh, uh, the studio was inside this place and it was unbelievable. And they had different buildings. You know, there was the, the residence where we all stayed and, and they cooked for us. And that was incredible. The food was great. Um, and then we had, you know, different rooms where we do guitars. And uh, we, we had one drum room. The drum room that we used was the arcade room. Uh, and it was all red. The whole room was red. Red carpet, uh, red walls, everything. Red velvet. And... Um, Kind of, we went in and, and we would take the song before we'd record it. We'd go and arrange it. You know, Doug and David and Glenn would arrange it. Then I would come in and listen to it a few times just to know the arrangement. Then we'd go in the studio and we would, we would track the guitars and the bass um, and, and how, with a click track. And then I would come in after those guys had it. We had the arrangement. I would go in and do my drum parts with uh, Ben Gross, the producer. And we would run through three different takes of the song. One would be very straight ahead, very basic drumming. Second one was a little bit more busy. And then the third one, he said, just cut loose. And he would like kind of uh, build the track, um, each one of them like that. It, it, it was such a cool process because, you know, it was, um, there was no TVs, there was internet, but uh, barely any cell service. 
Uh, so it really kept us focused. We were really focused on what we were doing. Not, not a lot of distractions. So um, I, I think it made for a great record and the atmosphere was so uh, conducive to you know a uh, creative environment so it was a lot of fun and and it you know it kept us really focused on what we needed to do which was make a great record and i really believe we did great um i'm looking forward to hear it awesome musically why what can we expect from it well i think musically it's it's you know it's glenn glenn and doug and david wrote wrote the material i don't write i'm terrible at writing so um i let them do the the, the writing and stuff and it's really glenn's glenn's vision on on the songs i mean he writes uh what he said in, in the past he's he writes about the human condition and um you know it's not the sex drugs rock and roll thing he's he you know writes about the human condition and, and so lyrically he's really deep stuff Uh, but musically, I, you know, um, it's it's really for us. It's it's a '70s vibe, but it's still got a a lot of power, you know. And and um, uh, I think it's it's just really a great record. I, I think it really, I think it's the best one that the Des Dead Daisies have done so far. I really, I believe that uh, with all my heart. And and bringing Glenn in was a was a really big asset. It was it really you know kind of sparked us all. Do you have a favorite song from this album? Uh, yeah, um, I, Like No Other is my favorite. I, that's my favorite song on the record. It's just so cool. It's just got that, you know, Glenn starts off with a kind of a bass solo, a little bass thing, and then we just, it's a wicked drum beat and, and very, you know, uh, how could I put it? It's heavy, but it's really melodic, and Glenn's voice just soars on it. He soars on everything. But uh, uh, this one, man, it's just, when I heard that one, I was like, oh, this is cool. It's reminiscent of Deep Purple, Uh, early Deep Purple White Snake. It was really kind of a cool vibe, and I love it. And uh, how was dealing? How was for you dealing with creativity during this lockdown time? Oh boy, you see, that's the tough one. I'm a I'm a drummer that sings. Okay, that's my bread and butter. That's what I do. I'm a touring drummer and recording drummer. So for me to sit around and not do any of that, it's really been difficult. I mean, but so what we've been doing is doing a lot of social media. Uh, stuff, you know, a lot of content to keep the fans, you know, engaged, you know, you know, through all of this, keeps them entertained, keeps them engaged. So, you know, it, for me, it's been difficult. I don't know about the rest of the guys, but man, it's hard for me. We've been off the road, actually. Our last show was December 18th of 2018. So I'm coming up on two years of not playing live. And that is not easy. <laughs> For me, it's really difficult. So I'm doing the best I can. How being in another band before helps you in the band? Well, I think for me, I've, I've learned a lot more. I mean, playing in Journey for 17 years, it really taught me to, to play for the song. And because uh, I'm a very busy drummer, I, I like to play a lot, you know, so for being in journey really helped me to just play for the song and, and play what fits. And I asked Glenn when, when he joined, first joined, I said, bro, if you could have any drummer in here, I mean, if, if you wanted any style behind your bass playing and singing, who would, who would it be? And he said, well, John Bonham. And, and so I knew exactly what he wanted and where he, what his direction was. And uh, he and I lock like a freight train, my friend. It's, it's pretty incredible. Just the, the way he and I play together, drums and bass is unreal. Um, and uh, his singing as well. He's got perfect pitch, so it's really easy to sing backgrounds with him, and I love singing with him. It's just effortless. I have some questions for you specifically. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are some questions that we always do at the mm -hmm. radio to get to know the artists better. Okay. So tell me, when did you decide to be a musician? I was six, believe it or not. Um, I was a really hyperactive kid. I had ADD. And um, my, the, at that time, the doctors would put you on Ritalin, which was like, a, you know, a, a, a drug to help you calm down. And uh, I was on for about a month. And my parents like this, this isn't working for him. He's, he just, you know, I had no energy. I was very lethargic. And they said, well, let's get him a drum set because that's what I wanted to do. And I, I didn't look back. I just went for it. And nobody could tell me anything. I was like, I wanted to either be in Kiss or Journey. <laughs> when I was young, so I, I got Journey, which is pretty cool because I look like crap in spandex. So <laughs> that was a perfect gig to be in was Journey. So yeah, I, at six years old, I, I just started and I didn't look back. And who are your main influences? Well, first drummer was Peter Chris. Um, you know, Kiss was my Beatles. So I, I was a big, big Kiss fan. And then I saw Rush open for Kiss. 
And I was like, man, that drummer is so amazing. And he's got the same amount of drums Peter Chris does, but he plays them all. <laughs> it was really cool. So then it was Neil Peart. And then I got into Terry Bozio and Steve Smith, the drummer for Journey, who's still my all-time favorite drummer uh, of all time. He's just amazing. So those were my biggest influences. And vocally, it was Ronnie Dio and Steve Perry. Those were my two favorite vocalists. I just, I love both of their their power and their finesse and, and great vocals. So those were my influences. And what's the first music you remember hearing? Oh, man. The first I remember, I was probably four or five. And my brother would play, my older brother uh, would play Steppenwolf, you know? Um, so I'd hear all that stuff, get your motor run, and that kind of stuff. I'd hear that. Uh, he would play that. Three Dog Night. Those were my first, you know, I listened to Three Dog Night because of my older brother. And then the Carpenters. My mother loved the Carpenters. And I didn't realize that, you know, that at that time that Karen was the drummer. And again, I just saw a drum solo of hers about, God, maybe a month ago. And she was awesome. She was really a great player. I didn't expect that. Uh, she was really technical, really, she had, she had chops. So um, those, that's the first stuff I listened to. And then, of course, my little brother brought over Dress to Kill, uh, Kiss is Dress to Kill, and that just changed my whole life. <laughs> and what's your favorite album of all time for you? My favorite album of all time? Oh, boy. I'd have to say, wow, there's a bunch. I, I really can't. I'd have to put Kiss Alive was, was a, a huge, huge one for me, and Rush Hemispheres, those two records, just changed my life. And then Escape, uh, Journey's Escape. Those three were like probably uh, pivotal in, in my growth as a musician. Those were, those were the, my favorites. So, so I have to put three as my favorites of all time. Okay, thanks. Thanks. That's, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> What's your favorite songwriter? Do you have one? Boy, um, honestly, this might sound funny, but I've always loved James Taylor. I think he's brilliant. Uh, I've always been a big fan of, of his songs and his voice, his songwriting. Um, so I would have to say James Taylor of, of all my, my, one of my favorite songs when I was a little kid growing up was fire and rain. So I, I just was hooked with James Taylor. I just love his stuff. So I'd have to say for songwriting, James Taylor is the king. And what's the most underrated band of all time? Most underrated band of all time. Give me a second. I mean, that's obviously it, it's, uh, let me think. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I think all the bands that we do here, well, there was one band that I really liked that, that nobody's probably ever heard of. And it was a band called The Fire Theft. And it's really interesting music. Um, I don't think they ever really went anywhere, uh, but the, they had one record that came out. It was just unbelievable. I remember getting it and just being mesmerized by the music just mesmerized by it so i mean they're underrated because they kind of came and went but uh, that's to me that's i would say that <laughs> that band the fire theft they were cool and what's their saturday night party song my saturday night party song oh my god what would it be uh, number of the beast <laughs> I, i think i mean i love i love number of the beast i used to listen to that as a kid uh, when i was playing in, in a metal band called wild dogs that was my song to get me amped up for a show before we go on stage. So you got to play number of the beast so I can get all pumped up. And, and that's what I would listen to. So, so that's my party song. If you, <laughs> that's my on your market set go song. <laughs> and what's the song that makes you cry? Wow. The song that makes me cry. Wow. Give me a second. Um, wow. Just give me a second. The, the, I had one on the tip of my tongue there. Um, boy, that's hard. Probably fire and rain. I'd say James Taylor, Fire and Rain. That song is, I always just love the melody on it. And it, it's such a beautiful song. And yeah, that's, that's one that kind of tears me up once in a while. <laughs> For real. Okay, Dean. Uh, what's on your playlist nowadays? What have you been listening to? Oh, gosh. Uh, a lot of Stone Sour. Uh, Slipknot. Um, We Are Not Your Kind. Um, so I'm a big metal fan. Uh, I've been listening to that a lot. I've been, um, let me see there. Uh, That's, that's kind of my go-to stuff. Corey Taylor's new solo record. I've been cranking that lately, which is pretty damn good too. Uh, what was it? I, yeah, CMFT or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's great record. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been listening to lately. A lot of that stuff. It's been really cool. What has rock and roll taught you? Boy, rock and roll has taught me, man. It's taught me that, that all forms of music are spiritual and uh, can change lives, 
can touch lives. Uh, to me, rock and roll is reckless abandon. Um, going out and playing a show and, and, you know, playing like it's your last show ever. Uh, and that's kind of the attitude of rock and roll is just reckless abandon. But I love the fact that all music, all genres of music, hip hop, uh, country, you know, rock, uh, metal, everything. It's a very spiritual thing. And it's, it's, it has the power, a lot of power to change lives, you know, and, and to make life better, man. I think that's what we're all missing right now is not being able to play live and people miss concerts and performances so that's what it's taught me rock and roll is just reckless abandon and, and it's a very spiritual uh very deep thing music is so that's what it's taught me thank you so much Dean, for this thank interview. you my friend that was great sweetie thank you so much thank you uh, it was a really great talk it was a pleasure for me talking to you Oh, me too, my friend. My pleasure. And I got to thank you too. And all the journalists that are, that are doing what you're doing, uh, doing interviews with us, you, you journalists, keeping our name out there. And, and uh, we appreciate you so much. You don't even know. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You have a Merry Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You too, my friend. You be safe. I'm hoping that we'll see you guys next year. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my friend. Take care of yourself. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Thank you. Bye bye. Oi, 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 89, na Rádio Rock.